Hi, welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, I'm going to take you through monitoring and developer tools. Azure monitoring. As you move more and more workloads into the cloud, it is very important that you monitor your Azure resources. For example, you might need to understand what are the metrics associated with each resource, i.e. CPU utilization, memory utilization, and also you need to monitor activities. For example, who started the virtual machine, who stopped the virtual machine, and also you need to monitor diagnostic logs, for example, event logs, IIS logs, etc. So there are a lot of things that you need to monitor about respective Azure resources. Azure provided a number of tools to enable that monitoring. So let me take you through one by one. The first basic tool for monitoring in Azure is Azure Monitor. Azure Monitor is a platform service that provides a single source for monitoring Azure resources. Using Azure Monitor, you can visualize, query, root, or archive, or take action on metrics and logs coming from resources in Azure. Azure Monitor is basically a centralized monitoring tool. You will be able to see the metrics or activities or diagnostics of all Azure resources at a single place. In addition to that, you will be able to configure in such a way that you can archive all this data into a storage account or event hub so that you can refer to them at a later point of time. We have a hands-on exercise on Azure Monitor where I have shown you how to monitor Azure resources using Azure Monitor. And the next thing is log analytics. I would say log analytics is a much enhanced version of Azure Monitor. It is a part of operations management suite that monitors your cloud and on-premise environments to maintain their availability and performance. Using log analytics, you will be able to collect the data from different sources. That source can be an on-premise environment, it can be a AWS cloud, it can be Azure cloud. So it can be anything as long as you can install agents on a particular resource, for example, Linux virtual machine or a Windows virtual machine that agent will start collecting the data and push the data into log analytics. And the next thing is Application Insights. Application Insights is an extensible analytics service that monitors your live web application. It is designed to help you continuously improve performance and usability. Basically, when you are creating a web app in Azure, you can enable Application Insights on it. The moment you enable that Application Insights, the data will be pushed into Application Insights where you can monitor how many users accessing your application, what pages that they are accessing frequently, how many requests you are getting, how many responses, what's the performance of processing those requests, and all those stuff you can monitor using Application Insights. It is extremely important from exam perspective and also when you are delivering Azure Consultancy is to understand the difference between these three services. Azure Monitor is a basic service where you can monitor Azure resources only. You will not be able to monitor your on-premise resources. Keep that in mind, Azure Monitor is for only Azure resources. Whereas Log Analytics is a much enhanced version. It has a lot more capabilities. And using Log Analytics, you can monitor and collect the data from either Azure resources or on-premise environments. And most importantly, you can collect the data from different cloud environments also, such as AWS Cloud. And when it comes to difference between application insights and log analytics, log analytics is focused on infrastructure and server side, whereas the application insights is focused on the web application side. So that's the key difference. And the next thing is automation. Microsoft Azure Automation provides a way for user to automate the manual, long-running, error-prone, and frequently repeated tasks that are generally performed in the cloud and corporate environment. Using Azure Automation, you can automate any kind of administrative tasks. For example, you want to shut down a virtual machine at 8 o'clock in the night and restart the same virtual machine in the morning 8 o'clock. You can do the same using Azure Automation. There is something called runbooks which are uh, Azure PowerShell scripts, which you need to write to carry out administrative tasks. We have a dedicated lecture on automation where I'm going to take you through what runbook mean and what it contains. And we also have a hands-on exercise where I have shown you how to start or stop a virtual machine using a runbook. And then advisor. Advisor is a personalized cloud consultant 
that helps you follow best practices to optimize your Azure deployments. It analyzes your resource configuration and usage telemetry and then recommends solutions that can help improve the cost effectiveness, performance, high availability, and security of your Azure resources. When it comes to cloud computing, one mistake everybody do is implement the infrastructure traditionally on the cloud. If you implement the infrastructure with a traditional mindset on the cloud, you will not reap the cloud benefits. When you are creating your Azure resource in cloud, it might tell you know three pounds per month, and you feel that's a low cost. But these three pounds or fifty pounds per month or hundred pounds per month will result in a large bill at the end of the year. So many clients will get surprised when they see this bill because these little little things will add up into a large bill. So to help clients to take the advantage of Azure in a right way, Microsoft came up with Azure Advisor service. So these are the Azure monitoring services that are available in Azure. We have a quite a few theory lectures and also hands-on exercises on this where I have taken you through in detail of all these services. And the next thing is tools. One of the biggest advantages of Microsoft Azure when compared to any other cloud provider is the number of tools available for you to manage your Azure resources. So there are literally a lot of tools, but I'm going to highlight few here. The first one is Visual Studio. I'm sure you'll expect this. Visual Studio includes a suite of Azure tools that increases the productivity and creates cloud powered apps directly from the integrated development environment. Using Visual Studio SDK, you can able to create storage accounts, you can able to create virtual machines, and you can develop and deploy web applications. So there are a lot of things that you can do using Visual Studio. And there is also something called Cloud Explorer using which you can explore all the Azure resources via Visual Studio. And the next thing is Azure PowerShell. Azure PowerShell is a set of modules that provides commandlets to manage Azure with Windows PowerShell. You can use the commandlets to create, test, deploy, and manage solutions and services delivered through Azure platform. Almost every Azure service has a commandlet associated with it. Using this commandlets, you can develop PowerShell scripts in order to carry out the tasks on that particular Azure resource. For example, you can start the virtual machine or stop the virtual machine. You can create a container in a blob of the Azure storage service. So there are a lot of things you can do using Azure PowerShell. And the next thing is ARM templates. Azure Resource Manager enables you to work with resources in your solution as a group. I'm going to explain about this Azure Resource Manager in another lecture. But basically, you can group all the related Azure resources of a solution in a group, which is called Resource Group. And you can deploy, update, or delete all the resources for your solution in a single coordinated operations. ARM templates is basically JSON files. Whenever you create an Azure resource, a deployment script will get automatically created for you. So in case if you want to deploy the same resource again and again with the same configuration, then you can use that JSON file and create that resource repetitively. Again, one very important thing you need to remember is all these tools will work together to deliver one solution for you. For example, you will write a script using Azure PowerShell, but in that script, you will use ARM template to define the configuration of the resource you want to deploy. So in the script, you will tell that I need to create a virtual machine, but to that script, you can pass on this JSON file, which defines the configuration of that particular virtual machine. So that is how these tools are related to each other. And also one more key thing you need to remember is what you can do and what you can't do using each of these tools. For example, if you take Azure PowerShell, they are specifically designed for administrative tasks. And when it comes to Visual Studio or REST APIs, those are mainly intended to programmatically manage the transaction side of your Azure resources. For example, creating a blob in Azure Storage or deleting a blob from Azure Storage. So when it comes to transaction side of it, it's a Visual Studio and a REST API. However, Visual Studio has a lot more capabilities, but uh, it is main purpose is from programming perspective. So let's go to the next set of tools. 
Next one is REST APIs. They are the service endpoints that support set of HTTP operations which provide create, retrieve, update or delete access to the service resources. Almost every Azure resource has a REST API associated with it. These are mainly used to carry out any kind of programmatical things. For example, if you want to put a message into Internet of Things Hub, if you want to register a device, there is a REST API associated with it. Using a simple HTTP operation such as GET and POST, you will be able to carry out the management of Azure resources. And finally, we have two tools. One is Storage Explorer. Using Storage Explorer, you can able to work with Azure Storage data. Instead of using Azure Portal, they have provided a desktop tool using which you can manage all the storage resources. And then we have Storage Emulator. The main purpose of Storage Emulator is to avoid creating a Azure account for each of your developers. Instead of that, you can ask developers to do programming against a local storage account. And once it is successful, they can able to deploy into Azure. I know you might be feeling that I'm rushing through these things. For each and every tool, we have a dedicated lab where I have shown you how to use these respective tools. Throughout this course, predominantly we'll use Visual Studio to manage everything. But in Azure Tools section of the course, I have taken each of these tools and I have explained you how to use it using hands-on exercises. Everything will be clear once you complete that section of the course. So in this lecture, I have taken you through Azure Monitoring and different Azure services available in Azure Monitoring. And also I have taken you through different tools available to manage your Azure resources. See you in the next lecture.